The market's changing on 30A. We're going to talk about what that means for you as I sit down with our CEO, Jimmy Burgess, next on Along the Beach. So as things have begun to change as far as the real estate market is concerned, there's a lot of questions out there. So what we want to do today, I'm joined by Bill Ullery. We're going to go through and actually talk to you about what we've been seeing, where we, what we're seeing right now, and maybe some things that we can be doing. Stick around also because whether you're a buyer or a seller or a potential buyer and seller in this market environment, we're going to give you specific things that you can do in each of those situations to make sure that you take advantage of some of the opportunities that we're seeing. Bill, let's, look, let's just kind of back this up a little bit, talk about what we've seen in the past and maybe where the numbers are right now, and then we'll go into kind of what we're seeing. Well, it's been a, kind of a wild ride here since really going back to 2020, the COVID year, we saw record numbers. We saw, uh, it was kind of like to call it the wild, wild west there for a while. It was, you know, we saw, you know, very low inventory, huge demand, low interest rates that really carried over into 2021, saw, again, record numbers in 2021. And, and getting into the kind of the spring of 2022, things started to pull back a little bit. And uh, we kind of got uh, an issue with inflation in our country and the government you know, kind of do what they typically do and step in and try to uh, curb that. We, of course, we know that the government doesn't directly influence mortgage rates, but they do change interest rates in the hopes that they kind of have some influence on that. So due to that and these high interest rates that we're seeing today, things have, have slowed down quite a bit or kind of leveled off, I guess is a better is yeah. a better way to put it. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit from a standpoint, just to kind of give everybody an idea of kind of what we're seeing in the market. We say slow down, it's the number of transactions. Um, we had record numbers when we were seeing those things because obviously our area began to be so focused with everything that's valuable here to people that was that we saw during the during the pandemic, well, with us having low density, having twenty five thousand acres of state owned land, having um, the fact that we could not go over fifty feet as far as building up all those low density things, great schools. All of a sudden, people had choices, had options. The value of home ownership just went through the roof. Right. And I don't think that's fundamentally, nothing's changed there, but we do have ebb and flows when we have the factors that happen out there. Also, when you have a run like we did, it's just natural to see it calm down a little bit, go back to some more normalized type of things. So to give you guys kind of an idea, what we saw really is we saw the peak in the lowest number of inventory of houses for sale on 30A back in the middle of February. It was, we were right around 120 homes for sale. That's right. Now today, we're seeing that we're at around 450 homes for sale. And actually, as we're saying this, we're right around 460 homes for sale. That number has continued to go up. So we're seeing that where we've got... You know, if you think about it from a supply and demand situation, we're talking about this situation where you've got more supply, which is basically the number of homes for sale. Mm -hmm. And then the demand side is the transactions. You want to speak to kind of what we're seeing some of those things. Yeah, I think it's important to look at, too. You know, we're seeing a lot more people in the long game than we've ever had before. Uh, you know, people are, we call them legacy owners, you know, people mm -hmm. passing uh, property down to their kids or their grandkids. Right. And we were talking about this uh, just before we, uh, we we jumped on here. You go back to 2007 during a peak part of our uh, of our market. Uh, we were right around. And by the way, when we're talking about these numbers, we're looking at uh, 30A, really that corridor south of 98 uh, to the beach from the far east end of 30A to the far west end. Just so you know that we're what we're what we're looking at here. But back in 2007, we were right around 1.4 million. Average, uh, uh, average sale price for a home in that area. And then, of course, we had the dramatic downturn in the market with, that, with the housing crash. You know, fast forward to 2022, some 15 years later, we're at, you know, 2.3 pushing, 2.4 million, which tells an interesting story because those people that are in that, you know, in that long game, you know, they're, they're, they're winning, you right. know. And so we're seeing a lot less of the, the flippers, if you will, people turning around and, 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 wanting to get rid of it quickly and more people hanging on to it, wanting to kind of uh, create those memories with their families and friends. And so, you know, I was just looking, you know, from last year to this year, as far as average sale price, we were about 1 point, you know, 8 million uh, in this area. And uh, year to date right now, as we see here today, we're right around 2.3 million. Right. So, you know, one thing that's really never waned here is number one is the demand, but over the long haul, I mean, prices have continued 
uh, to go up uh, at a, a pretty at a you know great rate. Yeah, and when we're talking about demand, a lot of times what can happen too is is when we see the move that we saw, which was just historic. Mm-hmm. Um, you have some, you have this where you almost have some of the demand that may have been coming for the next two to three years that is almost front loaded. In other words, you, everybody just kind of jumps in at the same time. What we saw there, we were seeing multiple offers. We were seeing those things, prices moving up so dramatically. So that's one of the things that's the factors on why we're seeing the number of transactions down like we are now. So we're talking about supply being up. We're talking about demand, the number of transactions being that demand side being down. Now we're at a place where we're just, it's simple economics say that, hey, that's, that's the leveling off we're seeing. Now, as we go forward, the question is going to be now, how do all these macro um, things affect? How do interest rates affect going forward with the, the amount of people that are purchasing here. Um, does a back to um, back to work, I guess you could say, more of being in the office more, does that affect people that had moved here that were commuting? Or is this something that's just a fundamental change? Those are the factors we're watching. One of the things that we really watch is the new pending contracts. It gives us a glimpse of kind of where we are going in the next two right. to three months. Those numbers are obviously down pretty dramatically as far as the number of transactions. Now, one thing that's skewing the average sales price a lot higher. You want to speak to that as kind of when we have less transactions, how that affects some of those sales. Well, we have less transactions, especially in the upper end of the market. You know, those are going to skew those numbers a little bit. If you've got some, you know, especially those, you know, high six figures, sometimes maybe even the seven figure uh, sale prices, uh, you know, when you have the fewer transactions, that's certainly going to offset I'll set that number. Yeah, and it makes it look, so if you have something and we have a $12 million sale and you go from having in the neighborhood of 80, 90 transactions this time last year to somewhere in the 60 range, right. now all of a sudden you're looking at something where one sale can skew the numbers higher. So it does give you this, uh, you see the average sales price is up year over year, but then you need to really get micro as far as what's going on. Now let's get really specific with buyers and sellers because this is where the rubber meets the road. If you're someone out there and you're like, is now a good time to buy? Let's talk about that if you don't mind a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Great question. It's a one you know we get quite often. I think, first of all, the answer to that question is going to be different for everybody. Sure. Everybody's got different goals and everything they want to accomplish with their with their property. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's critical that you, you know, have that conversation with your realtor, whoever that is, to set aside, okay, even if, you're, if you want to buy something now or whether it's, you know, five years from now, it's important to look at the facts and look like where things are, where they've been, and kind of where they're uh, trending. Now, I think the one thing that's important uh, is as far as people that are looking to buy, and in particular ones that are going to need to finance, is that, you know, I, I saw a figure the other day that 70% of Americans think you need 20% down the purchase, that's just sim- simply not true. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the other thing, too, is, is that, you know, the question we get a lot is, you know, as far as the rates go, you know, what should I, you know, should I wait? What should, what should I do? And I think, you know, most people are going to wait. Mm-hmm. And so by doing that, you're going to kind of be in with the herd, so to speak. And so you're going to, when it is time to buy, there's going to be, everyone else is going to buy. So there's going to be more competition. So I think, if it, somebody you were looking to buy right now, I think a couple of things, you're going to have some more opportunity. Uh, you're going to have uh, better inventory to choose from. So there's not going to be the competition that we saw, what, 18, 24 months ago when you had multiple transactions on, you know, you're competing with everybody. It was driving the price up. So I think it's important to look, you know, at some of these other factors than just simply say, you know, well, rates are high. I guess I can't buy. So yeah. there's other things I think that's important to look at. And that's why I think having that conversation, you know, with your realtor is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you're thinking about buying, a couple of things that you want to look at is obviously always play the long game. That's right. I mean, you, we never know what the market's going to do up or down going in the next uh, 12, 24, 36 months. But we do know that we do have that long game. We have a history of obviously seeing right. the demand here. I mean, that beach is uh, going to stay white. Um, good Lord willing. And we're going to also have those uh, those emerald green waters. So the things that are drawing people here is only going to continue to increase as far as the demand of what people are wanting to be here. Also, if you're looking at it, you know, interest rates will go up and down. Um, if interest rates go up from here and you buy now, you have hedged against that going up. If they they pull back at some point, you do have the ability to refinance your rate there. So it does give you the ability really to lock in your expenses right now on what it looks like. You always want to make sure that it is an affordable and it makes sense financially to you. But you know, sometimes we talk about all the financial sides of this. But you know, we I know we've both had clients in the past that have bought and they just there's that ROI that you can't put a number on. You want to speak to that a little bit about yeah, some of that just sharing a story. I have, this just really, really happened about four or five days ago. I was chatting with a, a former client of mine, helping purchase a home in Seagrove, and at the time we were looking, he was kind of agonizing over 
you know, uh, should I wait till the rate comes down a little bit or should I wait a little bit? Maybe the prices will come down a little bit. And he ended up buying, but we had this conversation uh, uh, three or four days ago and we started talking about kind of reliving that process. And he said to me, you know, said, Bill, you know, I really have no idea why I was, you know, racking my brain agonizing over these, you know, half a percentage point or a little bit lower price. And the reason why he was said that is because, look, I, these last two years, I've been able to make memories with families and friends that I never would have had right. uh, uh, had I just kind of sat around and just, you know, try to wait for that perfect time, which really, there is really is no probably perfect time. Right. The, the right. stars very rarely align perfectly yeah. uh, for when you're buying or selling. Yeah. So it's that, like you're saying, that ROI, you can't put a price on that I've, clients that I talk to almost on a daily basis that share those stories with me about, you know, man, just we're doing things we just never dreamed that we could we could do. Right. And so he was just, you know, reiterating to me, get, you know, that in everybody's situations, this, this is certainly a no way to talk somebody into making a reckless decision because everybody has to, you know, don't want to overspend and you want to make sure you're doing, you know, right things financially. But his point was, you know, I just would never have had this opportunity if I just sat on my hands and tried to, you know, worried about what, you know, is the rate going to come down a little bit next year or mm -hmm. is the price is going to come down a little bit? And so it was just a, it was just a, a great story to hear from a, from a guy who sat, who's enjoyed his time in his beach home here. Yeah. Uh, to wrap it up for buyers, if you're considering, here's a couple of the positive things to think about. Um, if we had told you 12 months ago that you'd have the ability to negotiate a sales price, it would have been, it was hard pressed. You were hard pressed right. about anything. Right. Um, you were probably going to be competing in multiple offers. That, that may or may not be the case now. Um, also, it gives you the ability really to um, lock in some things that maybe you had thought about and you just been maybe thinking, well, is now the right time? Everybody's situation is different, but I will tell you, um, I know that um, if it's focused on not just the financial side of it, there's a lot of things that go on with home ownership along the beast, along the beach and coastal markets that really are not as financially focused as, as well. It's those things like we talk about. I'll guarantee you at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to remember whether I saved a quarter percent, but my kids will remember right. that family vacation. That's right. So um, make sure you're making those decisions on the buyer side. Again, it is critically important that you have a professional that can help you uh, kind of navigate some of the things that are out there and find those best opportunities for each of us. Uh, let's switch it over here to sellers real quick and because um, it's kind of an interesting time for them as well. They're kind of looking at it from a buyer's perspective and seeing the higher interest rates. So if you're a seller, you're thinking about selling, give us kind of the seller's perspective where we're sitting right now. Yeah, the, uh, what a great time to have been an owner of a house over the last few years <laughs> with the amazing amount of increase in the value that you've seen. So if you're considering selling the next little bit, in, um, is now a good time or did you miss your opportunity? I would say you absolutely did not miss your opportunity. We are still seeing, I've, I've worked on multiple, with multiple people this week that have multiple offers on new listings. Here's what, again, comes back to the critical part of having a professional. Pricing has now become more important than it ever has been. Uh, because when you, you've, got a, you've got a group of people, you're competing with more than you were competing with last year. You have prices that have leveled off. Whereas in the past, you know, last year, and when the market's in an upswing, what you're doing is, is you're pricing sometimes a little bit higher because that's where the market's headed. Well, that's not the case anymore. The market is flattened out and you've got more competition. So pricing is critical. The price, places that are getting these multiple offers still are, have a couple things in common. Number one, they're priced at or a little below where the last sale price was to make them attractive because we're working on it from a perspective of what do buyers perceive as value. And a lot of times that comes right down to price. The second thing is, is you just want to have the house ready to go. Um, you know, you could get away with having a house that was functionally obsolescent, maybe that um, needed to be painted, needed to be cleaned up, those types of things, and you could still get a premium for that in the last couple of years. It's not the case anymore. You need to have your house properly prepared in a way, and you need to have an agent that has a marketing campaign that's going to get that information out to as many people as possible. So if you're considering selling and you're like, did I miss my chance? You did not miss your chance. There is still high demand in this marketplace, but it is more critical than ever on your pricing and your presentation to make sure that you're getting this property out to as many people as possible. Does that make sense to you? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You got to you got to have some kind of a plan of attack right. and any kind of what you want to do. But the pricing, like you said, is is critical. Uh, you know, I think there's still a, there's still kind of the buyers out there that are that are kind of wanting to hoping to get feed right. off of that right. what we saw 18 months ago, and it's not you know we're not quite seeing that. But like you said. Uh, one thing that's really never waned here is demand. Right. Uh, whether the market's gone up or down, the 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 want to of people to be right. down here has never 
gone away. Right. And so that, that's what's made this uh, market so attractive. So for sellers, I've always said, hey, look, there's people always going to want to come down here. Mm-hmm. It's never going to get, I don't ever see a point, God willing, where people are just going to say, oh, we don't like that area anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just how, you know, this market has grown. So like you said, I think it's, um, I think it's a, a great time for sellers. Yeah. And let me just kind of give you an idea going forward, kind of what will affect pricing, what will do some of those things. One of the things is, as we just mentioned just a minute ago about the buyer's perceived value. The problem we see is many houses we have on the market now, or the increase in the number of houses, because we're still low you know, historically um, from where we typically would be, is that there is a gap between what sellers are willing to sell for and what buyers are willing to pay. And the question then becomes, as far as what happens with pricing is, is do sellers or buyers adjust to where they meet? Because when they meet on value or perceived value and the willingness of sellers to sell at a certain price and the willingness of buyers to buy at a certain price, you see a market that is operating at a very efficient level. So the question is going to be is, is what does that look like going forward? Um, and that's the big question as we go into next year is, is will we begin to see sellers adjust there, because to be perfectly frank, there are a lot of sellers that are maybe on the market. They've got their house on the market, but they're not in the market. They're That's not right. where the price is. Right. So will they make adjustments? Will buyers begin to, again, perceive the value as higher than what they're seeing it right now? Um, and how do interest rates affect that? So those are all the questions that we're really watching going forward. Again, this is critically important for you to have that professional that you know, that you like, and that you trust, that you know is going to give you the advice and the understanding of the market in a way that helps. You want to wrap us up, Bill? Yeah, I just think, you know, like, just to reiterate, uh, you know, have, to have that plan, have have something uh, to that, that you can kind of follow. And, I, I, you know, I have conversations all the time with the person that calls me and says, hey, you know, I'm five or six years away from buying, you know, you don't really need to bother with me, you know. And I just say, hey, listen, th- this is a great time for you to start looking mm-hmm. because when it comes time for you to buy, if it's five or six years from now, you're going to see what the market has done mm-hmm. in those five or six years so that you can make a wiser choice and seeing, okay, here's what the factors that are that are that, are, that kind of altering price, and uh, whether it's you know mortgage rates or whatever the case may be, uh, you're going to have a better understanding of where we where we were, where we are, and where you're going, so that you can make a better decision. Absolutely. Well, thanks for watching, and make sure you stay tuned. We're going to do some really exciting things next year on Along the Beach. We're going to talk to some great people. We're going to check out some uh, some new events happening in the area. We're going to always uh, check in on the market and see what things are how things are going. So. Make sure you check out Along the Beach next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.